Good day fellow investors, welcome to the Value Investing School episode 2. Today we are going to discuss all the various forms value comes in and we are going to take the very recent example where Berkshire acquired a significant stake in Amazon. It is now valued just below 900 million. It was not done by Buffett but by his two asset managers there, Ted or Todd, we don't know who bought it. However, it's an excellent example to explain the following. When it comes to value investing and what value is, in the last conference call, Warren Buffett gave an excellent definition of what value actually is when it comes to investing. And the definition is as following. Value is defined by the cash flows from today to judgment day that the business is going to deliver. So when we look at Amazon, the Berkshire purchase, many are worried that Berkshire will skew from the value investing principles when Warren Buffett is gone and that Amazon is not a value investment. However, we have to put the cash flows into perspective. The, keep in mind the thing that Berkshire is buying businesses and put that perspective on Amazon. So let's try to value Amazon from a value investing perspective where value is cash flow, value is growth, and value is the ecosystem, the business, and the mode. Let's start. So the things we're going to learn in this episode are valuation based on cash flow. Something very interesting with Amazon is a negative or very low working capital business model. Growth is part of value, risk and reward investing. Why didn't they buy Amazon sooner? Value is what you get, price is what you pay. The recent 13F SEC filing, a 13F filing is where these financial institutions holding declare their US holdings. So you can see all the holdings of the bigger funds of the bigger institutions in their disclosures 45 days after the closure of the quarter. So recent new disclosure, they own 483,300 shares of Amazon. Now, when it comes to Amazon's valuation, we have to focus on cash flows. What Buffett said is to focus on cash flows from today to judgment day and Amazon's cash flows just keep growing. Trailing 12 months free cash flows are now at 23 billion. When you compare 23 billion to the current market capitalization of 900 billion, it seems like a small number, but don't forget the growth. It is also about the margin of safety and future cash flows. Let's discuss Amazon's margin of safety before estimating future cash flow. When it comes to Berkshire and buying businesses, they look at the business, what is the value of the business, how much would it cost to rebuild what the business has built up till now. So when they bought Coca-Cola, they estimated, okay, what would it cost to rebuild a brand like Coca-Cola in the 1980s? So the price was what, 20 billion, it would cost 100 billion, so it was cheap for them. So what would it cost to rebuild what Amazon has now, if you started now? Walmart is trying and you see, okay, it's very, very expensive to grow e-commerce and compete with Amazon. So that's one mode that Amazon has built till now, which will probably lead to more and more cash flows in the future. And they are building this ecosystem of strengths, of scalability that simply does very well and is an amazing business. Nobody can say that Amazon is not an amazing business. If we focus on the last conference call, they are trying to go from two day free shipping to one day free shipping. So really scaling, so really growing, being the front runner in the industry and their unit growth rate sales is a 10%, but that is not even their fastest growth business as there is AWS advertising subscription, etc etc that is growing growing fast based on their ecosystem the market share in e-commerce in the united states for amazon has been and is expected to continue to grow this is how big how strong amazon is and the management even says that given their 20 years of laser focused logistics and fulfillment experience they will use it to consistently improve 
etc. Grow the company, scale the company, and that is where investors can expect positive cash flows. On top of the improvements, there is also the e-commerce growth tailwind now at 9.9% of US retail sales. And if it continues to grow like this, we have a double in the next, what, 10 years for sure, as more and more people buy online. Plus the services, we can expect that Amazon will continue to grow steadily and safely. Now, when it comes to growth, there are some companies like Tesla that need, they are capital intensive, they need to spend a lot of money to grow and the profitability is questionable. However, Amazon has had the negative working capital business model and now it's a low working capital business model where it is financed actually by the suppliers. Let me explain. The net working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. When the working capital is negative or extremely low in Amazon's case, thus the current liabilities are higher or equal to the current assets, actually the suppliers of the company are financing the business. Amazon is growing on free money. A look at their balance sheet shows that Amazon has a total of 75 billion in current assets of which 42 billion in cash cash plus marketable securities and 68 billion of current liabilities where the largest account is accounts payable with 38 billion. When you add that up, the total net working capital positive is 7 billion for Amazon. That's a very, very low number. And the key here are the accounts payable, the accru accrued expenses that compound to 68 billion. So suppliers are financing Amazon with 68 billion of free money. How does this work? Well, for example, if you buy my book on Amazon, Modern Value Investing, you have to pay immediately. However, I'll be getting something like 70% of the Kindle version and 30% of the paperback version only 45 days from now. So if you buy, we'll be financing Amazon for 45 days. So Amazon is a high cash flow business and this makes it unlikely that it will go bust no matter what happens because it can rely on the huge cash flows that simply go through the business. So when you have such a strong business, you can scale, you can use 20 billion, uh, 10 billion to buy Whole Foods, try something new, invest for the very, very long term. And that is actually what Buffett has been doing in the past, buying businesses, buying businesses, using the free float. And that's why I think Amazon is very close to Berkshire from that perspective. Let's now go to the cash flow valuation. If you look at the cash flows, you have the yellow line here. So price to cash flows here has always been around 30, 25 to 30, 35. The price earnings ratio, the line above the yellow line has been crazy, even almost 1000 in 2015. But you have to see what to focus on. As Amazon is investing a lot in technology that is depreciated or amortized fast, so you cannot really focus on earnings. What you have to focus is perhaps better than earnings cash flows. And a company that is growing at 17% per year probably will go, grow in the double digits for a long time, has a moat, might not be considered expensive as a price to cash flow of 30. That's at least how I see the Berkshire purchase. So when we put this into the Buffett Berkshire perspective of buying great businesses, valuing them today up till infinity, until judgment day, then you ask where will Amazon be in 10, 15, 20 years? And then you start comprehending, okay, what is Berkshire doing with this purchase? They are simply buying a piece of a great business at hopefully a fair price for them, more on the fair price a little bit later. So if we look at Amazon's revenue, if they continue to grow at 10 or at 15%, I made a road 12 there, it's a mistake. So the revenue at 10% will be 625 million in 10 years or billion, sorry, in 10 years or 975 billion in 10 years. So the red number one. 
the earnings per share will go from the current 23 to probably 100 in the 15% growth scenario. The book value per share will go from the current 100 to 400.